Hey, what's going on guys? It's Lachlan here and welcome back to my second Unity tutorial. Now today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys about importing assets. I'm going to teach you about the viewports, uh, some miscellaneous uh, controls, and I'm also going to teach you how to implement a first or third person camera in your scene so you can start walking around in your scene right away while you're building because for me when I'm creating something like a terrain or I'm just creating a world I want to be able to I want to be in the character's point of view while I'm creating the world so I know what the player is seeing so that's the first thing I want to show you guys how to do it's pretty easy stuff so here we go so what I'm going to show you first of all is a lot of you were saying when you were doing the terrain that you didn't have the terrain textures and stuff like that. Well, if you didn't have the terrain textures, if you look over here in your project file right here, basically your project tab, sorry, and you go to standard assets, and if you scroll down, you'll see where it says terrain assets, and right here it's got like terrain grass, it has terrain textures, here it gives you cliff, good dirt, grass hill, grass and rock, stuff like that. That's where you want to look for these textures. Now if you don't have this terrain assets folder, the best way to bring that in, you can do it a few ways. I'm going to show you how to do it. Go to assets, import package, terrain assets, click that and it will automatically, it'll go and it'll import the terrain. Now I already have it in so it's not going to do it for me, but if you come over here to standard assets and you don't have the terrain assets folder there, you just right click and you can come over here and you can say import package, same as going up there and you can say terrain assets and you import it there and it's going to ask you do you want to import all import all and it'll bring them in and then when you're going like when you click on your terrain and you go to your paintbrush and you go over to edit textures and you want to do uh, add a texture just make sure that you it's automatically going to come up right here so that's what you're going to see you'll automatically see the textures right here when you bring them up because it puts them right here so just remember that pretty easy okay now what I want to show you is kind of like some stuff with the viewport so instead of just having the scene and the game views right here scene and game that's it you can come over here to window you can go to layouts and you have a two by three layout which gives you the scene the game and it gives you the hierarchy project and inspector right here so if you're going to work in scene view or you're going to work in game view now you notice game view doesn't move around because we don't have the camera yet the game camera so we're going to get to that in just a minute windows we're going to go to 4x4 four four split, you see where it says top, then over here we have our scene view, well I mean this is considered, okay it says scene here but this is really for me it's considered a perspective view because that's your perspective setting and I'm going to show you how that works. So right now this is the front view so wherever it's yellow that's where it's, we're going to do, look this is the right view, that's the back view, that's the bottom view, that's the back view, that's the top view and if you click the cube in the middle, perspective view, just like that. So that's how you kind of move your views around if you want different views and any time your mouse is over a particular view and you want it bigger, you, all you do is hit spacebar. And that's all you do. Make sure your mouse is over that viewport and hit spacebar and it makes the viewport bigger. Just like that. And that's it. So we're going to go here and I'm going to set it to tall. Okay, so now that we're back in perspective view, we're going to come over here and show you how to navigate. Now I already showed you like WASD moves back, forward, left, right. Okay, well if you hold down W and hold down shift, you'll go faster. Same with any other direction. If you hold down shift, you'll go faster depending on the direction that you're pushing it. So you gotta make sure you hold down the direction first and then shift and you'll go faster. So you hit W, hold down shift, and you'll go faster. So it's just another, you know, miscellaneous control. Now what I'm going to show you how to do is I'm going to show you how to put in cameras. Show you how to put in a first person camera and a third person camera to get you running around in your level right away. Pretty easy stuff. Once again, over here in your project file, go to standard assets and you're going to look over here and you're going to see character controllers right there. Now if you don't see that, you can do this. You can go to standard assets here, right click, import package and you can say character controller right there and it will import that so you make sure you just say import all and it'll bring that folder in there. So once you have that, you'll be able to go into that folder. You'll have a third person controller and a first person controller. That's all you need to worry about. Don't worry about the sources file. You can also do it from up here. You can say assets, import package, character controller, make sure you import all and then you should be good to go. So here's what we're going to do. First, I'm going to put a first person controller in the scene. All you have to do, click on it, drag and drop it, left click, drag and drop to your scene just like that. So now it is in our scene 
right there. Remember what we talked about before, if you hit W, it's going to make it to where you can move the, the object. So we want to move that up out of the ground just a little bit. Okay, and so we should be good. Let's see. Make sure it's, there we go. Because this is our first person controller. So basically it's a, it's a camera hooked to this object. You'll never see this object. This object is just there to detect collision so you don't fall through the world. So now watch what happens when we push the game cam. Now, if we push game cam, we are now inside of our, we have to press play. Remember this. Remember you gotta press play inside a game cam. We are now inside of our first person controller. So look, I'm moving around with my mouse right now. And if I hit WASD, I'm moving around with my controller, just like this. So now I can get kind of a view of, okay, so I figure if that's my if that's my point of view where my eyes are, this controller needs to be a lot smaller in comparison to those trees. So let's stop this, go back to scene, and we're going to scale it. By scaling it, we're going to make sure it's selected, and we're going to hit R, and we're going to scale it down just a little bit, uniform scale it down just a little bit, so we want want these to be bigger trees and you can do this like anytime with anything I mean you can make it however you want to make it so now we're done with that let's go back to game I mean you don't even have to go back to game you can just press play right here and it'll automatically go into the view so now we're in the view now let's see where our eye level is at the tree okay so there's eye level of the tree just like that so as you can see now we have a first person controller you can jump with spacebar just like this pretty easy and it gives you an idea of how you know you can build your terrain so you know okay that mountain's that big over there and the grass is let's see how tall the grass is in comparison to me so let's see all right so the grass is pretty tall so we can scale this grass down and I'll show you guys how to do that later but right now the grass is pretty tall but you can see the grass is animated and waving and we have a first person controller pretty easy stuff that's it that's all you have to do so now let's take off play now what we're going to do is we're going to delete that first person controller. Make sure you just click on this and delete. That's all you have to do. So grab the third person controller like this, drag and drop it into your scene. You'll see a little guy right there. We're going to pull this up just like so. Make sure he's out of the ground. There we go. Just like that. And we're good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to drop him in the scene. So we're going to hit play and let's see what happens. Uh oh. So he's just stuck in a run. Uh oh, I wonder why he's stuck in a run. And he only moves like that in a run position. Well, there's a problem here. And you guys may run into this problem too, and that's why I'm showing you this. Okay, so go ahead and stop the play button. So now he's back. You want to come over here to the third person controller script, and you're going to see where it says script. Then you're going to see idle animation, missing animation, walk animation, missing animation, run animation, missing animation, and jump pose animation, missing animation. All you have to do is this. Click on that little round circle, and you're going to say idle animation. Just click on idle. That's all you have to do. Just like that. Close out. Come over here. Same thing with walk. Find walk. Close out. Run. Right there. Close out. And jump. Pose and close out just like that now hit play again and he should work so now he's standing there and you can see he's in his idle animation so we have him let's see so we have him moving here just like so now there is no mouse control with this uh, unless you build it in so if you're a scripter and you can figure it out you can build in your own mouse controls where you can look around with the mouse while you're using the guy but right now it's just a third person control he jumps and he runs if you hold down shift he'll run so it just gives you an idea from a character's perspective on how to design your level. So you look at the rocks down here and you kind of you kind of look at the rocks and you think about the scale compared to his foot and you say, okay, does that look correct? And then you can just kind of do stuff like that. Like you look at the trees and you go, do the trees look correct? Do the character need to be smaller or bigger? And then you go out here and let's go find the grass. Where's my grass at? I think it's out here. Let's run to the grass. There it is. Let's go out here to the grass. Come on, grass. Okay, so if you look out here, you can obviously see that the grass is pretty overgrown, so we can scale that grass down. Um, and Or we can do it one of two ways. We can scale the grass down, or we can scale the character up. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can set scale on anything. So let's do let's just scale the character up, because it's the easiest thing right now. So we're not even worried about the grass. So you just hit scale. We'll scale the character up. And that means we'll have to scale the trees up later. But right now, we just want to scale him up to see what he looks like in comparison to the grass so oh look 
giant. I am a giant construction worker. So you come over here, and now you can see the grass looks a little better with him. Not bad. Not bad at all. So yeah, so we could do, let's see, okay. So that's all I wanted to show you guys. I will show you more. I'll show you how to get in depth with terrain, how to scale the grass, how to scale the trees, uh, how to start, you know, building an environment. Like, that's what I plan on doing with this. We're not going to do anything crazy with scripting or nothing like that because I don't script and I don't code. So if you want to do that, there's a lot of good places online that you can go look for that. Really what I'm showing is just how to create an environment. So right now we have a camera. We can use our third person camera or our first person camera depending on what type of game we want to play. And we can use that to get scale of the world. So how big our mountains are, how big a house is, how big a tree is, how big the grass is, stuff like that. So I hope you guys found this tutorial uh, helpful. And that's it. So remember, you know what to do. Like this series if you want to see more of this. I'm going to keep giving you more of these things. And I'm just going to throw out little things here and there that you're going to need to know. Just little pieces of information. information. Really easy stuff. It's not hard to do. You just need somebody to help you along the way and show you. And hopefully that somebody is me. So once again, guys, thank you for everything. And I will talk to you later. Bye.